Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, trigonometric functions, um, the unit circle, some other things to do with trig. Um, it's really important in a lot of higher level mathematics. You're going to see it all throughout calculus. It's going to be uh, something that you need to know as well as the back of your hand in order to succeed in higher level math. Um, so keep that in your mind as we go through these lessons today. Um, before, please, before we start, please ignore all this crazy writing on the board around me and consider this half circle. Uh, it's supposed to be a full circle. Um, but we only have room for half circle, and uh, so we have an angle in this half circle, theta, um, the arc length that theta cuts out, and r, the radius of the circle, and we define theta in relation to that arc length and that radius. Theta equals s over r. So when we think about a full circle, that's uh, 360 degrees, so we could say theta equals 360 degrees. Typically we uh, measure angles from this axis and go around. So a full turn around the circle, 360 degrees. Uh, it's also, the arc length is also 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle. So we can find out radians and degrees, uh, how many degrees equals how many radians. So we have 360 degrees equals 2 pi r over r. We can just cancel the r's and we get 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. Now we could write units for the radians, but typically uh, when you see radians written out, you won't see units. Uh, if you do, it would be uh, rad, R-A-D, or radians all written out. So we have 360 equals 2 pi radians, that's a full turn around the circle, or half a turn equals uh, pi. So these values are going to come in a lot more uh, when we take a look at the unit circle and get into uh, some deeper trig, but uh, just keep this in the back of your mind for now. Uh, you can always switch from uh, degrees to radians or radians to degrees. Um, you just have to do a little simple multiplication, uh, multiplying by 180 over pi or pi over 180, depending on which you're trying to switch from. So just keep this in your back of your mind for now. Uh, now we're going to go over the trig functions in relation to a right triangle. So the trig functions uh, relate the sides of a right triangle to an angle theta. And this is where SOKATOA is going to come in. Um, SOKATOA. It's, they're all abbreviations. So the first trig function we have is sine. That's the S in SOHCAHTOA, and OH is opposite over hypotenuse. And this triangle, that's A over C. Now we do the same thing with cosine. That's the C in SOHCAHTOA, and then the AH is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side here is B. Hypotenuse again is C. And then you have the last function tangent of theta. Uh, that's the T in SOHCAHTOA. And that's uh, adjacent over, uh, excuse me, opposite over adjacent. So now we have the reciprocal trig functions on the bottom here. Uh, cosecant of theta is really just 1 over sine, so it's hypotenuse over opposite. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine, uh, which is C over B. And cotangent is 1 over tangent, uh, which is adjacent over opposite, which is B over A. So another important thing you might notice about uh, these trig functions, uh, tangent of theta is really just sine theta over cosine theta. And cotangent is really cosine over sine. So really the most important trig functions we're looking at are sine and cosine. You can find all the other trig functions from that. Um, so those are essentially the, mo the two most important and uh, the two that we're going to be working with most. 
So now we're going to go ahead and we did some right triangle trig. Uh, now we're looking for a little more general case. So we have a coordinate axis over here uh, with the quadrants labeled 1 through 4. We have our angle theta, which again is measured from the positive x axis over. And we have a point x, y, and a distance from the origin r. So we're going to look to define the trig functions here. We know uh, cosine of theta. Well, we could just take a look and pretend that this here is a triangle. And cosine of theta is going to be x over this r, where x is actually negative. Um, so you can't exactly think of it as a triangle because x is negative in this case, and you can't have a triangle with negative sides. Um, but we can define all of the uh, trig functions in the general case up here. So we have cosine of theta is x over r, sine of theta is y over r, tan of theta is y over x, and then the reciprocal functions. So we can get an idea of where these are going to be positive and negative um, based on what quadrant they're in because the coordinates are going to change from positive or negative. So in quadrant 1, everything is positive because the x and y values are always positive. I'm going to denote positive with a plus like that. So in the second quadrant, we have a negative x value, a positive y value. So that's going to make tangent negative, and it's going to make cosine negative, but sine is going to still be positive. In quadrant 3, we're going to have both negative x and y coordinates but tangent of theta is going to stay positive because we have a negative divided by a negative. The other two will be uh, negatives. And then in the final quadrant, we have a positive x, but a negative y. So tangent and sine are both going to be negative, but cosine is still going to be positive. So um, by only, I mean all positive, that means all six. By only sine, I mean sine and its reciprocal function. We typically don't uh, work as much with the reciprocal functions, which is why I wrote only sine. Um, but just in case you are asked to work with them, that's the case. So now let's take a look at just some basic examples. Uh, I'm going to write out a 5, 12, 13 uh, triangle and just show all the trig functions for that triangle. And uh, 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple, which means that it is a right triangle. It's one of those triangles that has x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Um, it's really nice to work with because they're all whole numbers. So now we just want to define all the trig functions. Uh, for an angle in this triangle, we need to denote the angle. Otherwise, uh, the trig functions aren't the same because if you're taking the sine of this angle, theta, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, 5 over 13. But if it's this angle, it's 12 over 13. So it's going to be uh, important to remember which angle we're working with. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have cosine uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 over 13. Sine of this angle theta is 5 over 13, and tangent of that angle theta is 5 over 12. Uh, I'll leave it to you to find the reciprocal trig functions if you'd like. Um, but this is how we would uh, denote the trig functions for uh, this triangle. 
if we wanted to find this angle theta, you would use something called an inverse trig function on any of these. Uh, we're going to get into that in another video. Um, so now let's take a look at one last example. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, an example where we're given a tangent of theta in a certain quadrant and we want to find the other functions. So now that we've defined uh, the trig functions for uh, a 5-12-13 triangle, triangle, we're going to take a look at uh, being given tangent of theta in a certain quadrant and then you're asked to find the other functions based off of that. So if tangent of theta is negative four thirds in the second quadrant, uh, we know that uh, cosine is going to be negative, sine is going to be positive, uh, secant is going to be negative, cosecant is going to be positive, and cotangent is also going to be negative. Uh, it's just negative three over four. Now the other ones, uh, the other functions might be a little difficult to figure out. Um, so what I'm going to do is draw out the triangle that those coordinates would form. So if you could have a negative triangle, uh, this is a three, four, another Pythagorean triple, a three, four, five right triangle. Um, and if you could have a negative, um, this would be the negative x coordinate. Uh, we can just think of it as three, but for the purposes of this problem, uh, the cosine is going to be negative, uh, and it's going to be negative adjacent over hypotenuse negative three fifths. Uh, secant, negative five-thirds, just the reciprocal of uh, cosine, and then sine is going to be four over five, and cosecant is going to be five over four. So you could probably do this intuitively, uh, do most of it in your head, um, but if you do want to draw out the triangle like that, it does work. Um, just make sure that you know that this is not a real triangle because it does have negative coordinates and a real triangle could not have that. Um, but these are the basics of trig functions. Uh, this is a really basic level. Um, you need to be able to remember this uh, for all future courses. Um, so be sure that you know exactly how to find trig functions. Thank you for watching. For more math videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Or for additional resources, including affordable digital textbooks, please visit centerofmath.org.